Today on this old house, we start an entirely new project. We're renovating a house for three generations. But they have a limited budget, so we have to watch every penny. We'll salvage what we can. And we have a team of apprentices to help. What happened to all this plumbing here? I've never seen anything like this before. There's already rot going on in that trunk. So what have you found up here? Well, a bit of a surprise. It's really the classic plumber's lament. Nice, nice. Here is right on. Family that paints together stays together. Nice job, guys. Where will a slab like this be used? The money's in the detail. Oh, look at that fit. That is beautiful. Hi there, I'm Kevin O'Connor and welcome to a brand new season of This Old House. We are in the Boston suburb of Newton, Massachusetts and this season is very special. Hey Tommy, so we are back in Newton. Yeah, we've done several projects here in Newton. The last one was seven years ago. This year's project is a young couple with two small children and they want their house to be able to handle three generations. Well, generations is the reason this, this season of this old house is so special. Um, and we are dedicating our project to a new initiative that we're calling Generation Next. We're going to try to bridge the skills gap in the building trades. For decades, people haven't been going into the trades like carpentry, plumbing, and electrical. And we're working to fix that. We're going to be working with some schools, manufacturers, and some nonprofits. And we are going to promote the building trades and we're going to teach people to learn them. We've hired some apprentices to work on the job site. Silver Brothers and all the subs will have apprentices working for them. And later on this season, we are going to have three special interns working with us on the project. That's going to be cool. It's going to be great. And here's our house. Love the neighborhood, Tommy. And look at this corner lot, huh? That's a bonus. And we've got some celebrity firepower to help us out. Mike Rowe from Deadliest Catch and Dirty Jabs. Hey, Norm. Hey, Norm. Hey, Mike. Welcome. Evan, how are you? All right. Hi, to great to you. meet you, Tom. Yeah. Well, you know, Mike's foundation has been a great inspiration for us, and it's really helping us this year. Absolutely. Well, you guys are helping me as well. You know, Mike Rowe Works has been around now for about nine years. Wow. And when we heard you guys were doing Generation Next, uh, there was so much there was so much shared real estate, you know, and what you guys do. And we've been trying to close the skills gap in our own way. Um, and we do that really just by calling attention to good jobs that actually exist. And so many of those jobs exist in this industry. Right? Exactly. So the fact that you guys now in your, what, 39th, 39th season? 39th year. Unbelievable. The fact that you guys are still at it. Uh, I know you must understand how critical uh, the skills gap is and, sure how, and how difficult yeah. it is to recruit. Very hard. Anyway, we focus on uh, kids like Kelly Klein, who got mm -hmm. a scholarship not long ago. Kelly uh, was going down one direction, like so many people do, and decided the opportunities were better in heating and air conditioning. Mm -hmm. So he gets his certification, and he's off to the races. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. uh, Alexa Harder, a young woman who was a waitress, and um, this is really typical of what's going on in this generation right now. You know, people have jobs, but they're not skilled jobs. And so they don't see a real career. They don't see a real future. They don't like them. They, they don't like the them. jobs, right. So Alexa learns how to weld. Hmm. And then she learns how to weld really well. <laughs> and now she's off to the races. Yeah, I heard she's in the union. Yeah, Great. right. So our, our goal is really simple. We, we want to give people a skill that's in demand. And with the help of your show, we want America to see just what those skills look like when they're properly applied. Same thing you guys have been doing for 39 seasons. Yeah, exactly. Well, this project is going to be beneficial to the building trades and to your foundation as well. We did a national casting call, mm -hmm. got three apprentices. They're going to come up here and work on the project with all the guys and learn the skills of how you, how you renovate a house. That's awesome. Not only that, but we have all the contractors and subcontractors bringing in apprentices of their own. Of course, they're from the local area. But we're going to use the magazine, the TV show, the web. We're going to tell people all about skilled trades and how interesting these jobs can be. So the short version is, together, we're going to close the skills gap? I hope so. That's for sure. Well, why, it's as good as done. All right. There you go. <laughs> and we're going to get to work right now. So we're going to take a tour with the homeowners yeah. and check out this house. And I'm meeting Richard in the basement. That's oh, really nice knowing oh, you, Mike. Yeah, yeah. Nice okay. It's a big day for all of us. 
Want to tackle all your home improvement projects with confidence? Join This Old House Insider, a new streaming service from This Old House, the iconic Emmy-winning series that inspired a generation of home enthusiasts. Stream over 1,000 episodes of This Old House and Ask This Old House commercial-free. Watch it all in the This Old House app. And join live online Q&As with our experts. Best of all, you can try Insider free for seven days. To join, go to thisoldhousemembership.com. Hey guys. Hey, how are you? Wow, we got the whole family here. Yeah. Right? Who's yeah. this? This is Aria. She's two and a half weeks old. Two and a half weeks. Congrats. That's awesome. Thank and you. Who's this beautiful this little way. girl? This is Mira. Mira. Hi, Mira. She turned two a few months ago. For me? Whoa, oh, she did. Yeah. Yeah. Right. right. <laughs> That's awesome. So this is uh, this is the new house. It's a special house for you, right? Yes, it is. This is the house that I grew up in. Um, I moved here when I was two, right about when I was Mira's age, which is kind of funny. But yeah, um, yeah I grew up here. I've been here uh, till I was 18, went off to college. And then in 2015, we unexpectedly lost my mom, mm -hmm. who lived here. Um, and... We inherited the house, so we're back. <laughs> and back. this was her dream for us to live in this house. So I understand this third generation? Yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. so there's my parents, uh, I grew up in New Jersey and they still live down there. Um, and they'll be retiring in a few years and they're planning on summering, wintering down south somewhere and then summering up here, right. hopefully with us. So we'd like yeah. to have a nice, comfortable space for them to stay in yeah. when they're up here. Nice idea, yeah. Kind of like an in-law suite or something close? Yeah, something like that. You know, something you know that's separate but still part of the house so yeah. we can be together but everybody yeah. has their yeah. own space. They have their own space. That's, right. that's a great idea. We're not so on you, top of each other. All right, so it sounds like you guys are making a list. You've got some ideas of what you want to do, right? Yep, yep. And do you guys have a budget? Oh, yes. <laughs> you don't quite the match. Yeah. <laughs> what are you doing about that? Um, we are, we're going to focus on some of the condition things and making a little more space for ourselves and then, um, maybe doing some things in phases. Hmm. Well, that's a smart way to do it. You know, not everybody has a big budget and to do it in phases is a smart way. Yeah. yeah. And how about sweat equity? You guys thought about maybe throwing in a little oh, bit? Oh, yeah. Definitely. Oh, That'll great. It's mm -hmm. good. We love it when the homeowners throw in. We can find stuff for you. Oh, yeah. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Well, so we should probably hear more about the list, although we should probably do it while we're taking a tour. You guys up for giving us one? Yeah. Definitely. Tommy, let me show you out back. I'd love to see you. Let's go. All right. He gets the kids. You get stuck with me. <laughs> come on. You want to come with us? So let's start right here in the front room. What have you got for me? You want to see the weirdest fireplace that ever was? I like weird. Yeah, it is a weird place to have a fireplace, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, you come in the front door, and then bam, there's a fireplace right here. Brick. Big mantle. Oh, is this you guys? You guys stick um, insulation up the Yeah, floor? it's kind of a wind tunnel. <laughs> okay. We have some condition issues, insulation issues. Water what do you want to do with the fireplace? Ideally, we would like to take it out, but it may not be in the budget, so we just need to address these things first. Well, you've got a chimney on the outside, so that is a big job, but we can you know, tell you how much that would cost. you got some cool details, though. The diamond yeah, windows are yeah. beautiful. You can imagine a coat rack or a closet back in that corner. Yep, and then we have this stairwell. <laughs> Which I used to do this as a kid. Just years of coming down this staircase. I love this stairwell. Oh, I'm glad to hear that. This yeah. is a beautiful detail. So keep this. Keep that, and we'd love to replicate some of the balusters here, but again, this is a functional wall, and we may not be able to do it. We'll see. Okay. It's in the budget or not. Staircase down to the basement, I presume? Yeah, yeah. All right. Good windows, lots of light. The floors are in good condition, so not too much in yeah, here. Yeah, not too much. And this is the dining room right here. Nice. All right. Yeah. China cabinet. This is our China cabinet. With China. Three generations of China in there. Yep. Will this stay? It will. So keep the cabinet and the memories. Mm -hmm. Nice. And then over here, we're going to take out this wall and open it up to the kitchen. But keep this as a dining room. Yes. All right. Well, let's see what you got going on in the kitchen. All right. Let's see the kitchen. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So this is a little dated. It's a little dated. Obviously not original to the house. Right, right. My parents um, put this in about 25 years ago. Okay. Yep. We have um, some condition issues here. You can see the cabinets are pulling out of the wall. Yes, they are. So that really needs to be addressed. Okay. And what do you want to do? You want to just sort of pull the stuff here and replace it, or do you want to expand? We'd like to expand. Um, I think we're going to try to push this wall out about six feet. Nice. And then put in uh, three windows and then a window facing the street with one of those diamond pane windows like in the front. And, and one story bump out? Yes. Nice. And that'll leave you a lot more space in here. And what are you going to do with that? We're going to put in an island um, with enough seating for everybody to eat breakfast. Right. So informal meals here, mm -hmm. formal meals in the dining room. Yep. And then we're going to put a pantry in over there between the kitchen and the family room. Everybody loves their pantries. Yes. 
All right, that's a good plan. I like it. Cool. Thanks. So how long has the addition been on the house, Joe? This was built about 20 years ago. 20 years ago. So Liz was here. Yep, they have pictures of her sitting on the new foundation. Oh, that's cool. So I know that this room right here, this wall is going to go out about four feet. Yeah, it's going out about four feet, a little less than the kitchen. Um, and right around here, we're going to put in a powder room and then a mud room all along here for an entryway. Nice. And the bathroom that's behind this wall is going to come out. So this is all going to go. It's really going to open up this space. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. And then over here, we're going to take this wall out mm -hmm. to open up between the kitchen uh, and the living area. Right. This will be a half wall and yep. have a couple of columns on it. I know that one of those columns are going to have a, is going to actually be a bearing post for the new beam that has to go into that wall that we're going to take down between the kitchen and the dining room. We need that to support it. Yeah, exactly. And then over here in the corner, we're going to put in a wood burning stove. I grew up with wood burning stove in my house and yeah. I, I love them. Me too. I love them too. But I don't like a wood burning stove when it's on a raised hearth yeah. step there. So I like to try to make it as flush to the floor as we can. And when we deal with that issue, I want to solve this little thing right here that drives me crazy every time I see it. This step from the floor into the new space from the dining room. Look, if they're over here, they made it flush. And over there they didn't. So we definitely have to fix that. Yeah, definitely. The other thing is this ceiling that goes up on a hip like this, we're going to flatten it out. Yeah, so we're actually putting a second story above this, this addition back here. We're, yes. we're just going to have the master bathroom and the master bedroom. Right, and you're going to enter that from the front stairway. So it's key that when we enter that room, we enter at the same elevation and don't have a step. Yep, exactly. Okay, so now what's going on out back? Uh, we're going to have the garage and the in-law suite out back. All right, let's take a look. So the first thing that we're going to do out here is take out this old one car garage. Right. And the other thing is this deck is going to come down because the deck is actually going to start from here and it's going to go out about 12 feet by 16 feet, a much better user friendly deck. Yeah, a much better shape. Yeah. Now also, once we get the second floor built, we're going to put a first story addition on which starts about here all the way out to about the railing. Yep. And the new garage is going to attach to that. And it's going to come out to about the edge of the existing garage. Right. Perfect. And then on top of that is going to be where the new living space is. So we're going to have a, a bedroom up there, a sitting area, and a full bathroom. So all its own space. Yep. One thing that we have to think about is how we're going to heat and cool that second floor. So we have to think about the HVAC and keep it separate from the house. Yep. I think it's a great plan. All we got to do is start some demo. All right. Great. All right. I want to see that garage come down. <laughs> I think it's... Uh, it's Richard? Yes, sir. I was told you'd be in the basement. <laughs> Always. Always in the basement. That's right. Nice to see you. Nice to see you. Welcome to my world. Thank you. Your world is old, man. Yeah. This yeah. is... Late, eight, late 1800s when uh, central heating was first coming inside the building. Back in that era, it would have been a coal-fired furnace would have been in. They would have shoveled coal in through this window probably right here. There was a big old round thing here. Somebody came every morning. These, that's how these registers got established. And then... Uh, it would just heated the first little small part of the building. So. Right. But now we got all kinds of opportunity. You know, this is not original, obviously. So you start looking at what do you do? What do you do? And you start saying, well, I could tie right onto this, but I no longer have to think about leaving it right here because I no longer need the chimney, right? Because now modern equipment can be direct vented. So this can actually go away. So you say, all right, if this goes away, we go with something smaller. Well, wait a minute. Now we can start thinking about this. All right, get rid of that. Why does any of this have to right. be here? Well, we, need, we do need plumbing, but we get this over here. And then once you do, you say, hey, wait a minute, look what I found. Now you found a basement playroom here. What, in this town, that's three to 400 square feet. That's big money. You know, those kids are going to be teenagers someday. They don't yeah. want to get away from their parents. Well, it's a total game changer, yeah, though. Yeah. In this neighborhood, that's another right. 400 square feet big. is a totally different it house. It is big, yeah. So, so when, you, when you come into the basement for the first time, as you always do, is it is it still exciting after mm. however many seasons you've been doing this? Because yeah. you're... I would think at a glance you're getting the first sense of what your next six months are going to be like. Right. It's our chance to sort of think about the next hundred years. When I come into these old houses, I think about the ghosts of my father and grandfather who would have done this. Yeah. I think about all the people who work so hard on these things. Now we're looking forward to actually getting a new generation in here, these kids that are going to come in. I got an apprentice coming with me this year. Yeah. Thanks to your uh, whole idea about getting kids into the trades. It's great. Well, look, what my idea. I, <laughs> but the people who 
who make all this happen obviously are in short supply. And when I'm looking at this, I mean, you really get a sense at, I mean, this is the circulatory system right. for the yeah. home. That's right. And the amount of qualified people who are standing by to install these, it just, every single person I've talked to over the last decade is wondering where the people went. It drives us crazy because as the equipment is getting more and more complex, getting smarter, we have fewer and fewer people coming in. And we got homeowners that are demanding more comfort. They're, they're saying, I'm a half a degree off. People are used to, they want to be so comfortable. And we got no people to do it. So. I've been half a degree off. That's my right. Whole You've life. been more than half a degree off. <laughs> half a bubble <laughs> off plum. <laughs> All right, so if it all goes as planned, when yeah. the dust settles, yeah. these guys get another three, 400 right. square this feet. This has all gone away, and now you've got a, here's the stairs right here, and there right. is a 20 by 20 room that is heaven. And they're comfortable. Heaven, really? Are we overstating <laughs> it just a little? I mean, it's a very nice basement, but I'm not sure it's celestial, <laughs> but it's very nice. This is him. I would like an apprentice, actually. <laughs> you need a little mic. Several, I want a team. Micro micros. Micro micros. Hey, Liz. Hey, Norm. So what's going on up here in the second floor? Oh, a lot of things. As you see here, we have a sleeping porch. Um, we're gonna keep it the way it is and use it for storage during mm -hmm. construction. It has a shed roof, but ideally we'd like to make that match our hip roof, mm -hmm. but not in the budget, so right. phase two probably. Save that for later, yeah. okay. Um, here we have my childhood bedroom. Oh, this is great. Complete with glow-in-the-dark stickers on the ceiling fan that I put up. Huh. Maybe those should stay. Yeah. <laughs> um, one thing that's going is these closets that my dad built many years ago. Unfortunately, that creates a problem because if you look in this closet, you can't even fit a hanger perpendicular to the wall in there. Yeah, look at this, it's only 12 or 14 inches. For a proper closet, you need about 24. Exactly. So if those go away, you gotta do something about this. So we are thinking that we're gonna pull this wall out this way, or in the adjacent bedroom, we'll push it the other direction to make a bigger closet. Right, well, let me see what's going on in the adjacent bedroom, and maybe I can help you with that decision. That'd be great. This wall is a common wall between the two bedrooms. And when I come in here, I see that the closet is down this end, closer to the outside wall, and it's shallow, just like the other one. And you could build out this wall, but when I look back in that direction, the door is right up against the wall. Mm -hmm. So that means you're gonna have to take this door unit out, build a little stud wall over here, remove part of the wall here, reset the door, and patch the floor. That's a lot of labor and it's expensive. So the better choice is to move the wall on the other side because there's no issue with the door. That makes sense. We could right. save a little money that That's way. That's right. So what else is going on in this room? Again, we're going to take out the built-ins, mm -hmm. and then this window is coming out because the master bedroom is going to be built over the first floor family room. Right. That's going to be a good size addition. Yeah. So let me show you how we get there. Over here, we have our existing bathroom. It was done about five years ago, and that's going to stay exactly the same. All right, good choice. Save some money. There's nothing wrong with that place. Yep. And another shallow closet. Well, luckily, <laughs> it's going to be a hallway into the master. And then over here, we're going to have the laundry room, mm -hmm. which I'm very excited about on the second floor. And then through there, we're going to have the master bathroom. Mm -hmm. More of the addition. Right. Right. Well, it seems like a very practical plan. You're not doing too much in those rooms, cleaning them up, making them a little bit better. And you'll save money by doing that. But out here, you're going to spend a little bit more. Yep. Uh, it's going to be exciting. Yeah. Roger, you look like a man trying to come up with a plan. Well, trying to work it out what's going to happen back here, Kevin. We're going to have a new garage. This is going away. We're going to have a parking area that comes out into here. Yep. So we need to create a flat pallet for that parking area. So this material here is going away? In order to get enough room, we're going to have to dig in this ban banking. They're showing a wall coming maybe two feet off the fence line straight down to give us a big parking area. So when you're building a wall like this, what are you thinking about? Because you've got a lot of material you're going to have to hold back. Right. You've got to hold back this whole hill. So you need something that's going to stay put and be solid. So you're probably going to dig a deep footing in here, fill it with stone, and that's what you're going to build the wall on. And then what, you go to the homeowners and ask them what material they want? What are your options for materials for Well, wall? you know, you can do pressure treated wood, six by sixes. You could do individual stones concrete block or you could even do a stone wall. All right, sounds good. So uh, we've got sort of an older lot here, a lot of uh, plants that have been around for a while. Anything get saved? 
Yeah, we like to save what we can out of this lilac. They're hard to move sometimes, but we've also got a real pretty, the white flowers are just starting to come out on this one. And this is an old purple. We're going to salvage as much as we can. All right. And so when you take it out of there, what do you do with it? Where does it go? It's going to end up going to my house so I can babysit it. <laughs> oh, you're a good papa there. Yeah. All right. What else we got back here? It looks kind of scraggly. Yeah, but we have some sentimental plants back here. These roses have been in the family for a long, long time. So we're going to come in. They'll, they're a scraggly root system, too. We're going to pull them out, put them in a pot with compost and soil, water them in, and they're going to my house also. Well, that doesn't look like much, though. So you're saying the family's saving that because they just, they just have an emotional attachment to them? Yeah, but they'll be a pretty little rose. Oh, I love this, right? You're going to protect this thing, oh, aren't you? Oh, yeah, paper birch. One of the first things I'm going to do is put a fence around this to keep everyone from treading on it, and I mean a big area. I love to hear that. All right, so that tree is saved. Problems with any of the other trees, or are they all staying? Well, we got one problem tree up here in front. It's one of my old friends. It's a Norway maple. You know how much I like those. You and the Norway maple. Yeah. <laughs> Take a look at this. Oh, yeah. This tree has had an injury. See, it's all rotted right in this area right in here. Yeah. I think there was a branch here and it peeled off at one time and that caused that never to heal. It's, you know, pretty rotted all the way through. Rotted so much that this one's coming down? This one's coming down. It's either going to hit the house, hit the wires, or any one of the three poles here. Get it out now before it causes damage. Let's take it down. Sounds like you've got a plan. We do. Hey guys, how you doing? Oh. Doing good. What'd you guys think of the house? Great. Good. I think it's awesome. Actually, you know what it is? It's it's a classroom, which I guess is the case season after season. But this year in particular, the apprentices will learn under your instruction. Mm -hmm. The skills gap will close a little bit more, and and we have a lot of lessons to learn in here. Absolutely. You got a lot of lessons to teach. Yeah. <laughs> we'll try. Speaking of which, uh, where are my manners? Uh, I need to officially thank you guys because so far the partners of this old house have kicked in over half a million dollars for the MicroWorks Work Ethic Scholarship Program and I just wanted to say uh, officially that's all going to be used for Work Ethic Scholarships, more apprentices, so Great. thanks so much for that. Fantastic. Good. Fantastic. And our apprentices are going to show up next week when work gets underway. We're going to start demolition. Roger, you're going to be moving some plants, right? We're going to start digging. All right, well until then, I'm Kevin O'Connor. I'm Tom Silva. I'm Mike Rowe. I'm Norm Abram. <laughs> I'm Richard Thewey. And I'm Roger Cook. For this old house. All right. Oh, you're my girl. You guys have done this before, for sure. <laughs>Next time on This Old House. Say hi to Michael. He's our intern. He's going to be working with us now. Oh, terrific. Welcome aboard. Thank you. Hey, you and I should talk so that I can tell you what it's like working for these Silvas. Here we go. <laughs> Don't pay any attention. <laughs> We're ready to start demo, but there's a few things we have to do first. Our homeowners want to save these roses, and I'll show you how to do it. And we found this. The sleepers are just coated with this mold. Oh, man. That's next time on This Old House. Thanks for watching. This Old House has got a video for just about every home improvement project, so be sure to check out the others. And if you like what you see, click on the subscribe button. Make sure that you get our newest videos right in your feed.